Hello everyone, welcome to the first video on this channel. By everyone, I of course mean both of you. I know I sound like a cross between Topher Grace and Kermit the Frog, so I'm just going to apologize right up front for that. And now on with the show. Today we're going to be making a replacement nut to fit a furniture bolt that has an inset hex head. We'll be using my shop-made rotary brooch that fits the eccentric rivet tool post to form the inset hex head. The shape of this part is more like a female bolt than what you might think of as a nut. The nut has a fairly long shoulder with an internal thread and has a shallow head at the end of it, so from one end it looks just like the matching bolt that threads into it. I'm probably not describing it very well, but you'll see what I mean as we progress here. We're starting off with some 5 8 diameter mild steel, and we'll begin just by facing off the end. With the end faced, we'll measure up the stock to the point where the shoulder will end and the head will begin. This isn't a critical dimension, so I'm just going to measure and then make a marking cut so that visually I know where to stop the cut. And now we'll just turn the shoulder to diameter up to the marking cut that was made. Um, the cutting oil I'm using here, if you're curious, is just the sulfur-based thread cutting oil you get at your hardware store. You might think the turning tool that I'm using here is a little unusual. This started out as a boring bar that I ground, and it ended up being such a useful geometry that I use it a lot for facing right hand turning as well as boring. This is my first and only attempt at using the tang of a file as a chip hook. Uh, it kind of sucked. With the shoulder diameter reached, we can make a quick cut to clean up the underside of what will be the head. And now a light cut to bring the head to diameter. Next, our work needs to be drilled and tapped for M6 threads. I did the drilling off camera, and here I'm tapping the hole using my less than quality carbon steel tap from an old craftsman set. Lately, I've been on a mission to get rid of all the garbage taps and dies that I have in my shop. It's just not worth it using cheap taps and dies. This is a lesson that most of us home shop guys learn the hard way, as I did, 
and I'm just done with them. So as I have projects that require taps and dies in sizes that I don't have in quality, I've been ordering them. And it really doesn't take long before you build up a decent selection without laying out a whole bunch of money up front. And now we'll quickly use a center drill just to clean up the end of the threaded hole. Off comes the three jaw chuck and we'll reverse the work held in a collet. You'll notice a lever for a lever collet closer on my headstock. We're not using it here and in fact I don't use it very often at all because this is just a one-off part. If we were making a batch of something in a repetitive fashion, the lever collet closer with a work stop works great. I separated the work from the stock in the bandsaw off camera and there's quite a bit of meat left on the head so we're just going to make a few facing cuts to reduce the head to the appropriate thickness. The top of the head on the part that I'm replacing has a tapered contour. So here we're just replicating that with the compound slide. Next we need to drill a pilot hole for the rotary broaching process. The diameter of the hole should just fit inside the hex shape that we want to broach. Once the pilot hole is drilled, use a larger drill to give the edges of the hole a slight chamfer. Now we're ready to set up the rotary broaching tool and this is where the fun stuff starts. To start with, I've set the tool post on the lathe to one degree from the the axis of the lathe center line. The relief angle on the cutting brooch that I'm using is about two degrees, so the angle of our rotary broaching tool needs to be some amount less than two degrees, and one degree seems to work well. With the angle of the broaching tool set, we just need to bring the cutting edge of the brooch into center with the pilot hole that we just drilled. I'm mostly doing this by eye and feel. This is where having that slight chamfer on the pilot hole comes in handy. If everything is set up just right, then the rotary brooch should start spinning as it's brought into contact with the work while the work is spinning. With plenty of oil and a relatively low spindle speed, the brooch is fed into the work. You'll notice that as the brooch approaches the bottom of the pilot hole that you drilled, the amount of effort required will increase, so you really want to make sure your pilot hole has been drilled a bit deeper than the shape that you're broaching. And here we have the completed part. Came out pretty nice if I do say so myself. Here's a closer look at the rotary broaching tool that I made. The brooch itself is made from O1 tool steel that has been hardened. 
You can see the relief angles behind the cutting edge that I referred to earlier. It's about two degrees of relief. And a little flat in the side to engage with the set screw to keep the brooch from twisting inside of the body of the tool. The tool holder is just made from mild steel and the brooch just fits inside and is held in place with the set screw. On the back end of the tool holder is just a center drilled feature that locates against a quarter inch ball bearing and the quarter inch ball bearing slides down into the body of the tool and that acts as the bearing surface when the broaching operation is actually happening. You'll notice there's another hole for a set screw in the outer body of the broaching tool. And that set screw engages with a groove that's turned into the tool holder. That's just there to allow the broaching tool to completely withdraw from the part. As you're withdrawing the brooch from your work, the set screw that goes through the body of the tool is pulled on. So instead of just pulling the body of the brooch apart, it pulls the brooch out of the work. The design of this rotary brooch is a little bit simpler than a lot of them you've probably seen online. For my purposes, I can get the geometry that I need from the tool post of the rivet. That gives me my angle adjustment, so I don't need a holder that has the angle for the tool built into it, because I can set the tool post on the lathe by the graduation marks that are around it. That's a little unusual. So really all I needed was just a round body tool that would hold the spinning brooch. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.